Welcome to the video book summary of The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra. The book was published in 1994 and weighing 118 pages. Based on the natural laws that govern all of creation, this book shatters the myth that success is a result of hard work, extracting plans, or driving ambition. Instead, Deepak Chopra offers a life-altering perspective on the attainment of success. When we understand our true nature and learn to live in harmony with the natural law, a sense of well-being, good health, fulfilling relationships, and material abundance spring forth easily and effortlessly. The book is available on Amazon with the link in the description if you like what you hear, which you will. So without further ado, I bring you the book summary of The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. First, a little bit about the author, Deepak Chopra, born October 22, 1946, is an American author, public speaker, alternative medicine advocate, and a prominent figure in the New Age movement. Chopra studied medicine in India before immigrating to the United States in 1970. He's the author of more than 85 books translated into 43 languages, including numerous New York Times bestsellers. He is the co-founder of the Chopra Center for Wellbeing, the founder of the Chopra Foundation, and a world-renowned pioneer in integrative medicine and personal transformation. On with the book summary. There are many aspects to success. Material wealth is only one of the component. Moreover, success is a journey, not a destination. Material abundance in all its expressions happens to be one of those things that makes the journey more enjoyable. But success also includes good health, energy, and enthusiasm for life, fulfilling relationships, creative freedom, emotional and psychological stability, a sense of well-being, and peace of mind. Even with the experience of all these things, we will remain unfulfilled unless we nurture the seeds of divinity inside us. In reality, we are divinity in disguise, and the gods and goddesses in embryo that are contained within us seek to be fully materialized. Although I call the laws I'm about to discuss the seven spiritual laws of success, they could easily be called the seven spiritual laws of life. This is because they are the same principles that nature uses to create everything in material existence, everything we see, hear, smell, taste, or touch. Success in life could be defined as a continual expansion of happiness and the progressive realization of worthy goals. Success is the ability to fulfill your desires with effortless ease. And yet success, including the creation of wealth, have always been considered a process that requires hard work, and it is often considered to be at the expense of others. We need more of a spiritual approach to success and to affluence, which is the abundant flow of all good things to you. With the knowledge and practice of the spiritual law, we put ourselves in harmony with nature and create the carefreeness, joy, and love. True success is the experience of the miraculous. It is the unfolding of the divinity within us. It is the perception of divinity wherever we go, in whatever we perceive in the eyes of a child, in the beauty of a flower, in the flight of a bird. When we begin to experience our life as the miraculous expression of divinity, not occasionally, but all the time. Then we will know the true meaning of success. Now let's go over the seven spiritual laws of success and see how we can apply them in our lives. Number one, the law of pure potentiality. This law is based on the fact that we are, in our essential state, pure consciousness. Pure consciousness is pure potentiality. It is the field of all possibilities and infinite creativity. When you discover your essential nature and know who you really are, and that knowing itself is the ability to fulfill any dreams you have because you are the eternal possibility, the immeasurable potential of all that was, is, and will be. This law could also be called the law of unity because underlying the infinite diversity of life is the unity of the one all pervasive spirit. There is no separation between you and this field of energy. One way to access this field is through the daily practice of silence, meditation, and non-judgment. Spending time in nature will also give you access to the qualities inherent in the field, infinite creativity, freedom, and bliss. Law number two, the law of giving. This law could also be called the law of giving and receiving, because the universe operates through dynamic exchange. 
The flow of life is nothing other than the harmonious interaction of all the elements and forces that the structure of the field of existence. Because your body and your mind and the universe are in constant and dynamic change, stopping the circulation of energy is like stopping the flow of blood. Whenever blood stops flowing, it begins to clot, to stagnate. That is why you must give and receive in order to keep wealth and affluence or anything you want circulating in your life. If our only intention is to hold on to our money and hoard it since it's life energy, we will stop its circulation back into our lives as well. In order to keep the energy coming to us, we have to keep the energy circulating. Thus, the more you give, the more you will receive. The best way to put the law of giving into operation is to make a decision that any time you come in contact with anyone, you will give them something. It doesn't have to be in the form of material things. It could be a flower a compliment, or a prayer. In fact, the most powerful forms of giving are non-material. The gifts of caring, attention, affection, appreciation, and love are some of the most precious gifts you can give. And they don't cost you anything. And law number three, the law of karma, or cause and effect. Karma is both action and the consequence of that action. It is the cause and effect simultaneously. Because every action generates a force of energy that returns to us in kind. There is nothing unfamiliar about the law of karma. Everyone has heard the expression, What you sow is what you reap. Obviously, if you want to create happiness in the lives, we must learn to sow the seeds of happiness. Therefore, karma implies that the action of conscious choice making, whether you like it or not, everything that is happening at the moment is the result of the choices you've made in the past. Unfortunately, a lot of us make choices unconsciously, and therefore we don't think they are choices, and yet they are. If you step back for a moment and witness the choices you are making as you make the choices, then in just this act of witnessing, you take the whole process from the unconscious realm into the conscious realm. This procedure of conscious choice making and witnessing is very empowering. You can use the law of karma to create money and affluence and the flow of all good things to you, any time you want. But first, you must become consciously aware of your life. If you do this on a regular basis, then you are making full use of this law. The more you bring your choices into the level of your conscious awareness, the more you will make those choices which are spontaneously correct, both for you and those around you. And law number four, the law of least effort. This law is based on the fact that nature's intelligence functions with the effortless ease and the abandoned carefreeness. This is the principle of least action, of no resistance. This is, therefore, the principle of harmony and love. When we learn this lesson from nature, we easily fulfill our desires. In Vedic science, the age-old philosophy of India, this principle is known as the principle of economy of effort or do less and accomplish more. Ultimately, you come to the state where you do nothing and you accomplish everything. This means that there is just a faint idea, and then the manifestation of the idea comes about effortlessly. What is commonly called a miracle is actually an expression of the law of least effort. Least effort is expanded when your actions are motivated by love, because nature is held together by the energy of love. When you seek power and control over other people, you waste energy. When you seek money or power for the sake of the ego, you spend energy chasing the illusion of happiness instead of enjoying happiness in the moment. When your actions are motivated by love, your energy multiplies and accumulates and the surplus energy you gather and enjoy can be channeled to create anything that you want, including unlimited wealth. There are three components to the law of least effort. Three things you can do to put this principle of do less and accomplish more into action. The first component is acceptance. Acceptance simply means that you make a commitment. Today, I will accept people, situations, circumstances, and events as they occur. This means I will know that the moment is as it should be because the whole universe is as it should be. The second component is blaming anyone or anything for your situation, including yourself. This allows you the ability to have a creative response to the situation as it is now. All problems contain the seeds of opportunity. 
And this awareness allows you to take the moment and transform it to a better situation or thing. The third component of the law of least effort is defensivelessness. This means that you have relinquished the need to convince or persuade others of your point of view. If you relinquish this need, you will, in that relinquishment, gain access to enormous amounts of energy that you have previously wasted. And law number five, the law of intention and desire. This law is based on the fact that energy and information exist everywhere in nature. A flower, a rainbow, a tree, a human body, when broken down to their essential components, are energy and information. The whole universe, in its essential nature, is the movement of energy and information. The only difference between you and a tree is the informational and energy content of your respective bodies. You can consciously change the energy and the informational content of your own quantum mechanical body and therefore influence the energy and the informational content of your extended body, your environment, your world, and cause things to manifest in it. The quality of intention of the object of attention will orchestrate an infinity of space-time events to bring about the outcome intended, provided one follows the other spiritual laws of success. Intention lays the groundwork for the effortless, spontaneous, frictionless flow of pure potentiality. The only caution is that you use your intent for the benefit of mankind. And number six, the law of detachment. This law says that in order to acquire anything in your physical universe, you have to relinquish your attachment to it. This doesn't mean that you give up on the intention to create your desire. You give up on your attachment to the result. This is a very powerful thing to do. The moment you relinquish your attachment to the result, combined in one-pointed intention with detachment at the same time, you will have that which you desire. Anything you want can be acquired through detachment. Because detachment is based on the unquestioning belief in the power of your true self. Attachment comes from the poverty consciousness, because attachment is always to symbols. Detachment is synonymous with wealth consciousness, because with detachment, there is freedom to create. True wealth consciousness is the ability to have anything you want, any time you want, and with least effort. To be grounded in this experience, you have to be grounded in the wisdom of uncertainty. In this uncertainty, you will find the freedom to create anything you want. And the last law, number seven, the law of Dharma, or purpose in life. The seventh spiritual law of success is the law of Dharma. Dharma is the Sanskrit word that means purpose in life. This law states that we have taken manifestation in a physical form to fulfill a purpose. You have a unique talent and a unique way of expressing it. There is something that you can do better than anyone else in the whole world, and for every unique talent and unique expression of that talent, there are also unique needs. When these needs to match with the creative expressions of your talent, that is the spark that creates affluence. Expressing your talents to fulfill needs creates unlimited wealth and abundance. There are three components to the law of Dharma. The first says that each of us is here to discover our true self. The second component is to express our unique talents. And the expression of that talent takes you into timeless awareness. The third component is service to humanity. When you combine the ability to express your unique talent with the service to humanity, then you make full use of the law of Dharma. The seven spiritual laws of success are powerful principles that will enable you to attain self-mastery. If you put your intention on these laws and practice the steps outlined above, you will see that you can manifest anything you want. All the affluence, money, and success you desire. You will also see that life becomes more joyful and abundant in every way. For these laws are also the spiritual laws of life that make living worthwhile. And that's a wrap on this amazing book, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, one of the first ever books I read many, many years ago. Look back on our channels for previous video book summaries and subscribe to our channel for future books. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, hashtag bestbookbits. I'm curious what you got from this summary. Please leave it in the comments. One or two notes that you remembered. This summary is from the website shareguide.com. 
If you liked the video and want to buy the book, I highly recommend click the link in the video description to purchase from Amazon. Thanks for watching, and I hope you did learn a thing or two. Have a great day.